and today I've got two Chevy Chic thrift flips. Keep watching. So I went to my Goodwill bins and picked up these two pieces. This is a mirror. I've already removed it from the back to show you. These are not wood. They're like a plastic or something like that. They're old. And then also got this little, I don't know if you would call this a curio cabinet or just a little shelf that you hang on the wall or you can sit it up. It does have a flat bottom. They're both very pretty and scrolly and ornate. And they both need a lot of love. This thing is so grungy. It is greasy and dusty. It's so nasty. But easily enough, you can take the screws off the back. Look at that. Ugh so thick. You just take the screws off the back, pop it off, and get it cleaned up. So I'm going to start off by just using a soft shoe brush to remove all the surface dust off of this frame. This one was much easier to clean. So I just used that and scrubbed it up really well. I didn't want to break anything, so the brush is a nice nice compact easy way to clean those things then i'm going to take some alcohol on a terry cloth rag and just rub it really good and try to get in all the little cracks and turns and crevices you can see all the dirt on that that cloth there and just get all of that off you need to go around all the scroll work sometimes there'll be little spider webs in there and a little gunk okay so here's the back off of the shelf and i've got it outside my first step to very many steps to get this thing clean started off with some method degreaser it's heavy duty I was gonna use this brush but it was I could just scrape it off with my finger it was so thick on there so I'm just going to spray this down quite heavily and let it soak, then I had to soak it in the bathtub, then I had to use dish soap and vinegar and baking soda, it was just a process. I can do another video on that if you like. I used my Rust-Oleum 2X after everything was clean and dried in the sun, and so here's two coats on here, on the mirror frame. And it turned out very nice. I was sure to get in all the little corners and spray it from all angles. It was a new can of paint and it took the entire can of paint to do these two items. So here is the shelf without the back on it. Isn't this a beautiful piece? This is definitely something I'm gonna be keeping. Now when I spray painted this, I was sure to do um, the bottoms of the shelves, the top of the shelves, the inside walls, and all of that with the paint. So it has been thoroughly covered. It's not streaky, but it kind of looks like it in the, in the shadows there. It cleaned up quite well, but like I said, it took lots of work to clean it up. That's a big transformation. Even without going any further, that's a huge transformation. It looks like a totally different piece. So I'm going to take some of this wax. It's like a wax stain. I think I've called it Waverly, but it is not Waverly. It's like a home something. Can't remember the name of it. And then I have this little chippy brush. And I'm going to start using this on my mirror frame. So you just want to dot a little bit in there and you want to wipe some of it off. I went a little too heavy handed the first couple of swipes so you know I learned better I did better the next time but you know it's just um, it will wipe off easily so if you do what I do and you got a ton on there there you can easily fix that when you go back over it and wipe it off so none to worry. I wanted to be sure that I got down in all the cracks and the crevices just like when you clean it because this is going to bring out all the texture on this piece and on the other piece. So I'm going around all of the scroll work, I'm going around the indentions that are around the outside and the inner part of the frame. And then see, I just use a dry cloth to wipe over 
all that wax and it leaves the wax in the low spots and the high spots remain uh, a nice cleaner whiter color I'm gonna do the same thing here and you can see when you put the wax on the difference that it makes the age and the dimension that it brings back to the piece you can certainly leave it white but I think I prefer it this way I want it to look old it's an old piece it has old detail and I don't want it to look brand new it wouldn't look quite right in my house if it did so once it's all wiped off this is how it looks you can see areas where the darker spots have stayed and then I'm just going to set it aside and let it chill while I work on the next piece I'm gonna do the same thing here and with this one also since it's a shelf I'm going to be sure that I get all over the top edges of the scroll work that's on the top all of the greenery and the flower and the it's like a fleur-de-lis in the center I'm gonna go around that really well I'm just gonna make this thing look like it's been it's almost like putting the age back into it after you make it look new with the white paint or whatever paint you're using you want to put the age back into it I'm just flicking that brush back and forth across the edges there on all of that trim and from a bunch of different angles and it's the same situation here getting all the grooves getting all the cracks the corners I'm getting on the base of the top and then you can put a little bit on your shelves if you if you feel like you want to do that but you can see here how it is there on that work you can see that on the little leaves in the scrolly part I love this and then of course you can see me down there on the bottom and I'm just putting it on there as well and getting it all along the sides and this is how it is looking much better it really brings out all of those details right there it's just gorgeous you can rub the wax in more you can put less wax on it in the first place and you won't have as much to remove whatever you want to do with that but I love how it turned out so now we're going to go on to this old mirror which is grubby and you, you don't even realize it's as dirty as it is until you see the cloth that you're using and it's absolutely filthy you see that Ugh. so there's some spots on here and I didn't know if they were going to be able to come off or not so I'm just sure to get around all of the streaks and spots to see if they're permanent or if they can be removed I just started off with a um, it was some tissue paper I think that I had laying there and then I'm using a microfiber it's, like, it's actually a sock to uh, dry that off. Then I'm going to pop this gently back in and grab the original backing that was there. And I'm going to cover that with some cardboard or you can use construction paper. You can use felt. You can use whatever you have. But I had a piece that was approximately the size of this. And I went ahead and used it to cover the back of it to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to give the mirror a little more stability. And I do not want that thing to fall out. So I'm just putting these little, whatever these are, back in. Screwing them back down. And this is the result. A little closer look of what this mirror is going to look like. Now we're going to work on the backing. If I would have had another piece of vintage paper, I would have used that, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and use this burlap, which I think will be a nice backing as well. And I think it'll look fine with my farmhouse decor. So I'm just going to add a little hot glue. Make sure that when you cut out your burlap fabric that you have enough on the sides that you can roll up. I did cut one side. I actually had it all cut correctly, but as I was pulling to glue it down, I actually pulled too much on one side, So, but I fixed it. So now I'm just going to, excuse my hair, I need to get my roots done. I'm going to fold that corner over to make it look nice and neat, add a little more glue there, and then you can put a clamp on it to hold it in place while you go along and glue the rest of the edge. So I'm going to do that all the way around. 
and this is the final look of that you can definitely iron your burlap um, if you wanted to do that but I'm not worried about it because it will lay flat once I get it on here I do realize I'm putting this back on upside down but it fits exactly the same either way so I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that no one's gonna see the back of it right it's gonna be on the wall I'm gonna add my hangers back that go along the top and all of the original screws that came out of it you can use a little bit of construction paper cardboard uh, poster board whatever you have to go on the back if you'd like or you can leave it um, naked because it's gonna be against your wall most likely and then this is how it looks with the backing on it I suppose you could just go without a backing if you chose to or put some paneling back there some some chippy wood would be pretty in the back too and here we go nice and styled I just have some of my miniature baskets that I collect and a jar of beads and a little bit of greenery laid on there to give you an idea of how it looks um, this is my basement and the walls are green down there had not has not been painted so I just want to show you what it looks like against the green and then you can kind of get an idea um, you know of how it would look if you had it sitting but it's not hung on the wall in this picture just got it sitting and it's nice and secure that way I think it was worth the work turned out looking great and then here is the mirror and it's just hung up there for you to see what do you think which one do you like the best and do you think that these pieces would fit into your home decor is this something you would be interested in trying thank you so much for stopping by i hope you will subscribe if you have not already and i'll see you again real soon bye